Here it is. It's the 2023 Ford Edge. Now, the one in behind me is the ST401A, and it's in this beautiful rapid red metallic paint. It looks stunning. Now, there are a few things about the Edge in general that you're gonna learn in this video, but before we get started, I wanna give Formula Ford a huge shout out and thanks for giving me access to this thing to shoot the video for you guys today. Check down in the description below for their contact details. Now, we're gonna be going over some basics of the Edge. If you're looking for like technical walkarounds, you wanna know how to use the steering wheel cluster, the Sync 4 media screen, check down in the description below. I put together some crazy comprehensive videos. Now. As I mentioned, this is the ST401A, which is the highest available trim level for the Edge. It's got a lot of things in it. We've got heated ventilated first row seats. It's got 21 inch tires, a backup camera, front facing camera. It's got park assist and a ton of other features. It's kind of crazy. You know, the Edge ST is a little bit more unique than the rest of the Edge lineup. And that's because of what's going on underneath the hood which we'll get to in just a second. But starting off, taking a peek at the exterior, I like the styling of the Edge, it's nice. So I love the rims in the ST version of the vehicle. But if we look at the Edge in general, you've got the SE, the SEL, the ST line, the titanium, or this, and that is the ST. So the ST line and the ST are fairly close when we look at feature sets. The big difference is what you're gonna find underneath the hood. And we'll get to that one in just a second, but so different wheel choices that are available, different styles, but these blacked out rims, I think they just look nice. When we look at all the different moldings and highlights and things like that, like even looking into the headlamp, we've got this nice black molding right along the very bottom there. That looks pretty dang nice. And then as we look in the front end of that lower part of the bumper, we've got this nice kind of black molding that follows all the way throughout the bottom part. And then when we look at the grill, the ST grill looks beautiful. I love that nice honeycomb design. We've got our ST badge along the bottom right, Ford blue oval in the middle, and we've also got a front facing camera. So the front facing camera you're gonna find in some versions of the Edge, but it doesn't give us full 360 because we don't have any side view mounted cameras. So backup camera, front facing camera, so we can at least get our backup view or our forward facing view. Still is pretty nice though. Now. If you look at the Nautilus, you would have side view mounted cameras, which means that you would have a full 360 view. But if you want a comparison looking at the edge in the Nautilus, check down in the description below. I've just put together a comprehensive video on that one as well. But like I said, I do like the styling. We do have the option for that forward sensing system as well. Again, depending on your model, but it does come available inside of the Edge ST when you look at that 401A package. But What's underneath the hood of the ST separates it from the rest of the vehicle lineup. So let's have a peek. All right, now once we've got the little lever just to the left-hand side of the pedals, we can just go underneath and we've got our little release. You gotta, gotta jam your hand in there nicely. Heard that click. Oh, on hydraulics, which is definitely a nice thing. And you've got this. It's the 2.7 liter turbocharged engine. Now you're going to find this inside of the Nautilus. You're going to find it inside of the Bronco on top of that, which is amazing. And power wise, it is respectable. So you've got two engine choices that are available inside of the Edge. It's either going to be the 2 liter turbo or the 2.7 liter. So it's 250 horsepower, 280 pound feet of torque versus 335 horsepower and 380 pound feet of torque. So if you want the best possible performance out of an SUV or crossover, whatever we're calling it here, you do want to look at the Edge ST as an option. Like the power inside of this thing, like I said, 335 and 380 horsepower or 380 pound feet of torque is really good. You put your foot down and you are going. It is beautiful. But a few things, we don't have any sort of engine cover here. We nothing over top. I do love that we are on the hydraulics inside of this thing though. If you're technically inclined, checking and changing your oil and fill up your fluids as necessary is very straightforward at the same time. But this is pretty nice. Filling up fuel inside of the edge, just along our driver's side, and fuel economy inside of this is actually pretty respectable in either engine, surprisingly. Now, one caveat, you'll hear it in most of the videos that I put out, for the Ford world specifically, 
the horsepower and torque specs that we're looking at underneath the hood are all achieved using a premium fuel. So do you need to use a premium? No, not at all. Because these things are recommended minimum manufacturer's recommendation at just regular 87. But if you want the truest possible performance out of this thing, you ideally want to use a 91 or a 93. But with gas prices, 167 a liter right now in Canada and where I am just in uh, Pickering right now, it's a little bit pricey when you get into premium. So if you want the truest performance out of it, 89, 91, ideal. But 87 is really all you need to use inside of it. Whoo, all right. Now towards the back end of the edge, that black line that I showed you in the front end there follows through. So we've got it following through our tail lamps there. Nice look. I love that like black and red split. It looks really sharp. Now the black on black also looks good, but this really impressive too. Now a few things, we've got our, our, we've got our wiper, we've got our backup camera, and then we've also got the reverse sensing system there. Dual tip exhaust inside of the ST. And then we've also got our trailer tow package on top of that. Now, when we look at towing inside of the edge, doesn't matter if you're in the two liter or the 2.7, we're maxing out at 3,500 pound towing capacity. So it is a respectable amount that we can pull in this thing, which is nice. But so overall, this is great. Now, we've got a few different ways we can get into the trunk of the edge. There's a button on the inside, just to the left of the steering wheel. We've got a button just under here. If you've got the key fob on you, we've also got a little button there. And then depending on the model of the edge that you're in, you might also have foot activated power. Let's have a peek. Now in the cargo area of the vehicle, we've got a great amount of space. And that's honestly one thing that I love about the edge is how much space you've got in the trunk. So if you've got kids, you've got, you know, kids that are in sports or you've got a baby, so a stroller, things like that, more than enough room to get everything in there, which is nice. Now, a few things. We've got our regular carpet liners. We've also got the option for thermoplastic rubber trays right from the factory. And one of the big benefits of those trays is that if you're the type of person where eh, maybe you like to go on hikes and get a little bit messy, you've got those trays that you can just easily pull off and spray down in order to clean them out. You do have the option of getting it from the factory. You can do aftermarket through like WeatherTech and a few other companies as well if you prefer to go that route. You've also got a button along the side in order to be able to power release the second row. Now, one thing to note, it is powered down, but it is manual back up. We do have this tray technically fully removable. And when we lift it up, we've got a nice amount of storage space and it's partitioned really nicely. Like right side, nice amount of storage. Left side, not quite as much, but still a decent amount. We've got our white spigot. So if we ever need to fill up using a jerry can, we can make that happen. And then we've also got our mini spare tire on top of that, which is definitely a nice thing. This is nice. <laughs> I love the amount of space that's inside of the edge. It, it is really nice. Now, you've got a few different options for the seats on top of that. So cloth seats, ActiveX seating material, or we've got this like mix, like leather type of like suede material that you're going to find inside of some versions of the vehicle. Like the ST, like the seats, really, really nice. And they pop that little bit more. It's kind of cool. We've got this like little ST badge right in the middle of the seat there as well for the first row driver passenger side. But we've got these nice metallic highlights along the door that follow through the vents and all the way throughout the center stack here as well. That looks really sharp. But we've got so much technology available inside of this thing too. Like we've got a multi-speaker Bang & Olufsen sound system. Six speaker is going to be standard in some of the lower trims, but I'll let you listen to that one in just a second. So some other cool technology, we've got a blind spot system on our side view mirrors. So it's gonna highlight orange, letting us know if somebody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle. We've got some other great features on top of that, like our seat memory, as well as our side view mirror memory. So, and actually technically, this one has a power steering wheel, so it's even steering wheel memory. So seat, steering wheel, side view mirror memory for three individual profiles. So if you've got multiple people driving the vehicle, just go and knowing you can have different settings for each person, which is amazing. Now, what so many good things. Like we've got some lights by our left knee there. We've got our light control for our fog lamps, for our interior controls. We can turn off our traction stability control, etc. But 
This is nice. Good amount of visibility throughout the dash. Wheel is nice. And like the space inside of this thing is crazy. Like I'm six feet tall. So with the seat like all the way down and kind of the way that I would normally drive, I've got two and a half, maybe three inches of headspace there with the seat fairly upright. But I mean, obviously you roll it back and like six, four, six, five, you'll probably comfortably be able to sit inside of this thing, which is great. But the steering wheel, really nice. We've got this like great looking stitching along the door that follows through the wheel. And even into the seats and armrest, it looks really sharp. But we've got a series of different things for our cluster. So two different screens, one for things like media and navigation, the other one for some basic settings on top of that. We've got inside of the edge in general, at least regular cruise control, but adaptive cruise when we look at the Edge ST 401A. Like I said, this thing is pretty much as loaded as it's going to get. The Titanium is pretty much the 301A, pretty much as loaded as we're going to get here as well, but good features. Now, if you're looking for a walkthrough on how to use the adaptive cruise control system, check down in the description below. I've put together a comprehensive video showing and explaining how that system works. It's really, really cool. Along the right hand side, we've got a series of other buttons for volume control. We can answer hang up on a phone call and things like that. And then because we're in the ST, we've got this little ST badge along the bottom part of the steering wheel. It's really cool. Now I did mention, if you do want to walk through on how to use the steering wheel buttons, the instrument cluster, the media screen, check in the description below. I've put together some comprehensive videos there. But like I said, the steering wheel is great. Ah, I like it. Now paddle shifters might be available in this thing. And one of the benefits of the paddle shifters is that we can easily drop out gears as necessary. We've got the option for either an eight speed or a seven speed automatic transmission. So it's an eight speed in the two liter and it's a seven speed in the 2.7 liter turbocharged engine. So a little bit of a difference there. Now we are going to be push button start inside of the entire vehicle lineup. And then we've got this like, gorgeous sync four media screen that was brought into the, I think it was 2021 Edge, but it's amazing. It's also found in the Mach-E. We're looking at the F-150 Lightning, some versions of the F-150, the Expedition. It's an amazing system, but this is also running the older version of Sync 4. Ford is going to be releasing the Sync 4A with Android Auto, or, yeah, Android Auto OS. So I'm very curious what that's going to be like once it's released. Not there yet though. So it's supposed to be coming in the F-150 Lightning first and then kind of rolled out across the board from there. But I, I love this screen. We've got factory navigation. And even if we don't want to rely on factory nav, you can still hook up through either an Android or an iPhone to use Google Maps, Apple Maps, Waze, things like that. Though map applications are going to depend on if you're in an iPhone versus an Android though. But I mean, there are so many other really cool features inside of this thing. Like we've got our phone listener, we've got a whole bunch of, like we've got our voice assistant, we've got ambient lighting here, vehicle hotspot, and so many other cool features. One nice thing is that the climate control settings are now baked right into the media screen on top of that. So we can change up the temperature, we can, we, well, we've got heated, ventilated first row seats here as an option as well. They're really nice, and that's heated, ventilated for the first row. Heated as an option potentially in the second row. And again, it's going to depend on the trim level of the vehicle that you're in. But one cool thing is that we can also press the voice command prompt if we wanted to do things like change songs, radio stations, and navigate using our voice. But we've also got the flexibility of changing out the temperature using our voice as well. So we could say driver's side, 20 degrees or whatever the case may be, and it's automatically going to adjust it there. We can have it automatically turn on our steering wheel by pushing that, our heated steering wheel on top of that, which is so cool. So cool. So many cool features. Uh, we've also got, do we still have games? Do we have games here? Yeah, we've got games here available too. So we've got blocks, lane change, Sudoku, tiles, and a few other cool games, which is nice. But moving down, we've got volume rocker, tuning rocker, and 94.9 FM. So I got to say, amazing song, amazing band, but the sound that you get inside of this like Bang & Olufsen system is unbelievable. Oh, I love it. But if you're an audiophile, like you definitely want to get an Edge model with the upgraded system. It's really nice. 
Not saying the six speaker isn't good. This is just like infinitely nicer. I love it. But we've got a series of other things down here. We do have a button for our camera. And I did mention, so we've either got a front facing camera or a rear facing camera. No option for a 360 inside of the edge whatsoever. Not moving down from there, we do have a few USB power points. So USB, USB-C, there is the option for wireless charging. So if you've got a phone that supports it, just drop in and you're set to go. It's really, really nice. Ooh, cool. I wasn't sure because I got a new phone and I was like, oh, it doesn't have MagSafe. Will it charge up? Yes, it will. Really nice. <laughs> All right. Now, as we start to move down from here, we've got this like nice, uh, nice metallic look throughout the center stack. It's really sharp. We've got a rotary dial shifter. So park reverse neutral drive into a sport mode. We've got an electronic parking brake. We've got an auto hold setting, which the auto hold is an interesting one because if you come to a complete stop, your engine might turn off. Now I say might because it doesn't always do it. It's kind of up to the car when it happens. Like if you've got your cool, if you've got any sort of temperature setting going, like if you've got the heat going or the air conditioning, it may never turn off when you come to a stop. So it's really up to the car when it happens. It at least has to be uh, heated up. So you've got to be at you know, that neutral level in order for it to at least be able to turn off. But we do have the option of pushing that button if we want to have it disabled temporarily. We do have park assist inside of this thing too. So the vehicle can help us out with, ooh, parallel parking, perpendicular parking, or parallel park out. It's really straightforward and same idea. If you want to know how that park assist system works, you'll find that video down below. We do have a reverse sensing system. So beeping as we back up, we can toggle it off down here on top of that. But other things, we do have our armrest there. And one cool thing, fully removable tray, which is nice. And then as we look in the armrest, there's no, yeah, we don't have anything down there at all, but a boatload of storage space. Crazy. Like I'm almost elbow deep inside of this thing. Oh yeah. It's kind of crazy how much space is inside of this. I love it. Now, moving up overhead, we do have a little storage tray right in the middle of the dash. There's an auto dimming rear view mirror. One thing is that it's, it, you can't turn it off. So the auto dimming is automatically going to happen at night. I do wish that Ford would introduce auto dimming as a capability, but it's not available in either Ford or Lincoln vehicles yet. <laughs> From there, we've got controls for our cabin lights. We also do have full panoramic sunroof. So the single button press is gonna open up that shade there really, really nicely. We can, if we want to, just vent this thing out or open this thing up completely. So single button press opens it up most of the way. Secondary button press opens it up that last inch and change. And then we just kind of press and hold there in order to be able to shut. So very straightforward. But I do, I love the panoramic roof. It just opens things up so nicely here. We do have our sunglasses holder. There is a home link system. So if you've got a garage door opener at home, you can program that in. Visor, vanity mirror, built-in lights. And extend this thing out. Not necessarily to block all the sun because we've got that little bit right on the end here, but I mean, if you were driving, it probably blocked the majority of the sun hitting your face. We've got an assist handle for the driver passenger side in the first and the second row, which is fantastic. But like I said, features styling wise, this is a nice ride. Like I love the Edge model in general, but the ST, like I said, it just, there's something different about it, just the sportiness of it. Now, if you don't care about the sportiness side of things, you could look at the ST line instead. So one of the benefits of that ST line is that it has all of the looks and most of the features that you're going to find in the ST. It just has a two liter turbocharged engine instead of the beefier 2.7. So if you don't care about that extra power, you can save yourself a couple bucks and look at the ST instead or the ST line instead as an option, but it's nice. Now, got to figure out what's going on with that second row. So let's hop back there and see what kind of space we're looking at. Ah. So the second row of the edge is nice. Like the seats, oh, super comfortable, which I absolutely love. And like it, the, the edge itself, like it is fairly wide. So could you fit three full-size versions of me back here? 
it actually might be doable. Like I'm six feet tall, like fairly broad shoulders. And like, usually I find I have an issue with my feet in the middle seat, but like three full size versions of me in this thing, I think is absolutely doable, which is fantastic. But overall styling spacing is nice. Oh, it's solid. It's not too shabby. Now a few things spacing wise for this row, I've got maybe half an inch of head space here, but we've got a little lever along the side here and we can use that if we wanna fold the seat down, but we can also extend it backwards, uh, which is really nice. So if we wanna create a little, well, like significantly more space, like I think I'm kind of maxing out at what, like four and a half, no, like more than that. Yeah, probably five inches of head space there. So, I mean, like even knee space, like I've got the driver's seat set up for me, six feet tall and like good amount of knee space here, great amount of foot space on top of that, which is fantastic. But features and styling wise, it's pretty much what we're gonna find in the first row. Like we've got those same metallic highlights along the door, that same stitching that follows through the door and the seats on top of that. And like I said, the seats are really comfortable in the second row here. But behind the first row seats, we've got pockets back there as well. Base vent control as we move down the armrest. We've also got heated second row seats as an option. And that's heated second board outboard, or second row outboard seat. So middle seat's never going to be heated, but we've at least got the option for that driver passenger outboard seat, which is great. We do also have some cup holders here too, which is great. And along the door, we've got a little bottle holder on the driver passenger side. Moving up overhead on both sides, we've got a little assist handle. We've got a clothing hook on both sides and we've got a little cabin control light there as well, which is great. But I said feature wise, styling wise, comfort wise, this is really nice. Like whatever Ford's plan is for a replacement for the edge, like I can't wait to see it. It better be as nice as this, <laughs> is what I've got to say. As this car is nice, I really like what Ford's done with it. But I got to do this. We're in the Ford Edge ST 2.7 liter engine. Let's take it over for a quick spin. The Edge ST has a, well, the, the Edge in general, I should say, has a few different options available. So we're either looking at a 2 liter turbo or 2.7 liter turbo. You're only going to find the 2.7 liter turbo inside of the ST model of the Edge. But it's like super impressive, like 335 horsepower, 380 pound feet of torque. You put your foot down. <laughs> and this thing goes, it has a good amount of power. So if power is something that you're concerned about, where you're like, you know what, I, I want something that'll go. The ST is really good. Like not gonna, I'm not gonna say that the, the regular Edge isn't good. There's just something about this 2.7 turbo that is just, it's phenomenal. But like, listen, like no audio editing inside of this whatsoever, but it is, so quiet, so quiet. It's great. But you can definitely see, like, well, I shouldn't say that. It's like some similarities to the, the Nautilus, like really it's just gonna be the powertrain, like either the two liter, or the 2.7 engine. Outside of that, the those two cars are like really, really different from one another. But uh, if you want a walkthrough on the comparison between the Edge and the Nautilus, check down in the description. I put together a video comparing the two of them. It's kind of neat. Well, folks, that was a look at the Ford Edge ST. What did you think? I love the features, love the different options and everything that this thing can accomplish. Like the 2.7 engine, I think is absolutely beautiful. But what did you think? If you have any questions, drop down in the comment section below and let me know. If you enjoyed this video though, give it a thumbs up, share it with somebody if you think they might find it helpful. And until I see you next time, take care.